Uh, I'd like to call the uh, uh, Minnesota House Sustainable Infrastructure Policy Committee to order, uh, and I will be chairing. I'm Representative Hornstein. We have uh, Representative Chair Cagle will be um, presenting three different bills. I, I warn people here on the committee, and I'll warn uh, people in the audience to not goof around just because there's a substitute teacher today. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, our first uh, item of business uh, is approval of the minutes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Chair, I move to approve the minutes. Okay, the uh, minutes are moved. Is there a discussion? Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, the motion prevails. Um, so today um, we'll be hearing three bills um, that uh, Chair Cagle has introduced, and they're um, kind of a capstone, if you will, of uh, the work that's been done in the committee. And, um, you know, we've talked a lot here in the committee about assisting uh, small communities with their IIJA and other federal uh, initiatives, uh, technical assistance. We'll be hearing more about that, uh, more uh, in terms of how we bring federal dollars to Minnesota and then making it easier for agencies to coordinate their sustainability and resiliency efforts. So that's kind of a preview of, uh, of the bills today. And, um, you know, I'm interested in making sure that all voices are heard and that, um, it, uh, you know, we have a ample time to discuss these bills. And so um, if we aren't able to vote the three bills out today, uh, we do have time on Friday morning at 1030 to finish the agenda. So with that, um, Madam Chair, uh, the first uh, bill on the agenda is uh, House File 2406, and that is the uh, Federal Infrastructure Funds Coordinator. Do you want to move your bill? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd move that House File 2406 be re-referred to the um, State Government and Local Finance and Policy Committee. Thank you so much. Uh, House <coughs> File 2406 is moved. and. Uh, you can, uh, we have a DE amendment first, uh, uh, Madam Chair, if you want to. And I would to, move uh, the DE1 amendment. Okay, uh, maybe just give us a very quick explanation of the DE1. Sure, so thank you, Mr. Chair members. Um, the DE1 kind of, it adds the appropriation amounts and then also clarifies we're adding chips and other subsequent federal appropriation acts um, associated with spending authorization, or the um, spending authorization or appropriations. And then um, the uh, changing the, um, the duties um, really to just kind of serve as the state agency and then also coordinate um, with the all the different stakeholders that um, are able to access IIJA and CHIPS and, and um, IRA funding. And so really allowing some flexibility um, to make sure that we're engaging all of the stakeholders. Thank you for that. Um, members, is there a discussion of the DE1? So again, trying getting the bill in the shape that uh, Chair Cagle would like us to consider. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, the motion prevails. And the DE1 is approved. And so now we have House File 2406 as amended before us. Chair Cagle. Thank you, Mr. Chair members. So this is really um, looking at the next couple years as far as, uh, you know, with the, the Michigan Infrastructure Council and kind of trying to move towards that model. Um, it's gonna take us a while to get that stood up. And so in the meantime, we have to make sure that um, we're working in, in a coordinated manner, manner enable, um, enabling us to um, access as much of the, the federal funds as possible. And so this just really gives the state some resources to do that. Um, I know a lot of the governor's staff and, and um, administrative or in the um, departments have been doing this work but um, they've been doing it on top of everything else. And so I think that we really need to give them some dedicated resources to make sure that they have the ability to do the work and um, get as much funding to our state from um, these federal dollars as possible. So with that, I have some testifiers, um, Anna Mingi and MK Anderson, um, they would like to. Good morning, welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Good morning, Mr. Chair. My name is Anna Mingi. I'm State Budget Director and Assistant Commissioner at Minnesota Management and Budget. 
I'm here this morning to testify in support of House File 2406 as amended. I'd like to thank um, Chair Cagle for her partnership and working with us to, to really assess what we think the department and the state needs at this really critical time. Um, House File 2406 provides really important capacity to MMB to really amplify the pursuit of and implementation of important federal infrastructure dollars. This bill is um, very similar to a component of a proposal from MMB and the governor's budget recommendations around in increasing our financial and strategic leadership for the enterprise, but it really focuses on some federal funds coordination. Um, you know, Minnesota, like many states, has a relatively decentralized approach to how we pursue federal grant dollars. Agencies are largely responsible for identifying opportunities and pursuing those. Um, and that, you know, that works pretty well for us. But what we learned during COVID, this is a, you know, one of the many lessons we learned during the COVID years was that when we had these influxes of federal resources and we could build a, a centralized and strategy-driven approach to managing those dollars, we could really amplify how they were able to impact Minnesotans, both at the state and local levels. And that's something that um, we tried to do in the governor's budget, I think is also reflected in this bill. So while MMB, as Chair Cagle referenced, both MMB and the governor's office have been doing work to coordinate around federal infrastructure dollars, um, there is, there's more we can do, especially you know, in anticipation of additional opportunities through bills like the IRA and the um, and CHIPS, but also hoping, hopeful for additional state match to be appropriated this legislative session. So I want to describe briefly a few things that we are doing and what we hope we could do with, um, with the funds appropriated in this bill. So to date, MMB has um, created a website about the IIJA, including a tracker of all the awards Minnesota has received to date. Um, MMB and the governor's office coordinate multiple cross-agency working groups around federal funding opportunities. And um, there are regular sort of topic-specific meetings with external stakeholders hosted by the governor's office. However, with this, um, with additional funds, we would plan to hire staff to do more direct work with external partners, have to build out a, a more robust tracking system of funding opportunities, not just for state agencies, but for local governments or nonprofits or those who might be eligible, um, and really dig in on that interagency coordination. Um, so I think that is all of my remarks, but I, I'll be happy to stay around for questions. Um, thank you so much for your testimony. And um, uh, Madam Chair, do you, uh, would you want us to pause for questions now or just have the sure, second we can, testifier? We can pause for questions. Okay. Any questions? Yes, Representative Schultz. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, Representative Cagle, and to um, Ms. Mingi. Uh, my, my first question for you is, uh, where do you see the biggest gap in your current ability at MMB to already address this need? And this desire, I should say, because this is new. So I think that the, the place of the greatest opportunity, I think is, um, it's largely probably partnering um, externally and making sure that there's great good flow of information between state and other partners. I think one one thing that we hear is, um, you know, where where should I go if I have a question about the IIJA? And right now, that answer is, you know, the the relevant state agency. And state agencies have really um, strong relationships with relevant funding partners. But by creating a centralized home for this work, um, we we think that would be more successful. Follow up, Representative. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, so so I guess right along this this area, I mean, wouldn't we be able to accomplish this within the the budget currently outlined um, that the governor proposed, and the and the budget that has been in place? The testifier, uh, Mr. Chair, Representative. Uh, thank you for that question. So there are a few, a few moving pieces there. So this work is, is new to the agency. It's a level MMB. You know, while our strategic, our, our statutory mission is to safeguard the state's resources 
and to make sure that we're receiving, you know, providing maximum impact for taxpayers. This is a level of work and coordination that isn't currently um, within the scope of our work. So this would be additional uh, capacity. I'd also highlight that some we have been funding some work within our division related to federal funds oversight through um, COVID relief dollars that sort of are expiring at the end of this year. And so we are we're losing some funding within our agency as well at the end of this fiscal year. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so I appreciate the, the answers there. Um, a slightly different question here. So the IIJA was set up uh, to um, basically for the next five years. I think it's, I want to say it's till about 2027 approximately. So what do, uh, I'm not seeing language inside this bill that properly sunsets this uh, additional appropriation. I realize we only have, this is, you know, 2023, 2024, 2025 are covered in this uh, particular appropriation. Um, but my concern is that this just becomes an add-on that exists into perpetuity. And I think that we need some language around um, finishing up this, this particular um, program because I could easily see this and I'm concerned about it. I could easily see where this would exist into perpetuity into the future. Um, Chair, maybe that's a good one for Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Representative Schultz. Um, for me, that's the goal. I would love to see this continued on in the future because I don't think our needs for infrastructure are ever going to go away. And, um, you know, what I really like to see is this morph into something that um, our local communities can really use, like the, the Michigan infrastructure model. And so um, I, I don't think that the need for um, assistance and guidance through federal funding is, is going to go away. And so I, I see this as a really good return on investment opportunity where we can really um, take a minimum amount of money and, and turn it into a lot more of federal funding for, for our state, which means better roads, better bridges, better um, water infrastructure, and jobs. Uh, Representative. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair and, uh, and Representative Cagle. I, um, you know, th there are several different um, uh, specific federal pieces of legislation listed in this and uh, to suggest that this needs to continue on in perpetuity outside the realm of uh, what is already provided through our state agencies I think is is probably the wrong the wrong course for our state um, and and this is just creating more bureaucracy to, to work through I share your your comment our common goal in this committee of ensuring that we're, we're the best competitor for um, for the, the resources that are coming from the federal government. But this is, you know, this is specifically designed for, you know, this, the infrastructure money that is coming. So specific legislation is referenced in this law. And that's why I think it's important that once, once that has ended, that this program also end. Okay, thank you for your comments and your questions. Um, next on the list, we have Representative Gilman. Awesome, thank you, Chair. Um, so quick question, um, what would the qualifications be regarding this coordinator and staff? Do you have you know, um, standards or qualifications that you'd be looking for in creating this new, um, I don't know what the word would be. Position. Position, <laughs> that's a good one. Proceed. Ms. Mr. Chair, Representative, I, the, um, so we, the position description hasn't been um, drafted <coughs> clearly, but some of the things, mm that we would be looking for uh, would, I think, be a skilled manager and communicator, someone with experience building relationships, not just within state government, but outside of state government. Expertise in federal funding and federal grant processes would be really important. Um, and then because we envision a small team, also some, some management capacity, those are some skills that are top of mind for me. Representative Gilman. And just a follow-up question. Does it state in here how many individuals the support team is? A coordinator and then support team, does it say how many? Um, Chair, do you want to take yep. that one? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Representative Gilman, we kind of estimated between three and four. Is that correct? Yeah, so three and four support staff. Representative, a follow-up? Okay, so just the follow-up. Um, so 70,000 to start and then 570, you know, each those next few years for three to four staff. It, that will cover 
their salaries, $570,000 for three to four people. Is that right? Um, uh, we'll have the, uh, <laughs> we, the uh, <laughs> MMB can uh, help us out with that. Mr. Chair, Representative, yeah, that's, that's correct. So the vision, the, these numbers assume that when fully implemented, there would be a team of four, but that in the first year, just given where we are in the year, we would hire, we'd have about three people come on for a couple of months in the first year and then build out the team to full level by the beginning of 2024. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the questions. Any other uh, questions of? Next testifier, Mr. Chair. Yeah, we'll do. Uh, thank, you. thank you for your testimony. And next we have uh, MK Anderson from Fresh Energy. Welcome to the committee. Uh, Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. My name is MK Anderson. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm a senior policy associate in the Clean Transportation Department at Fresh Energy. Fresh Energy is a 30-year-old Minnesota-based, nonpartisan, nonprofit organization that is working to achieve equitable carbon neutral economies. I appreciate the opportunity today to speak with you in support of House Files 2406, 2405, and 2499. We are on the precipice of an economy-wide technological revolution with respect to the rapid deployment of technologies that will be crucial to meeting state, federal, and global decarbonization targets. The Federal Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, Inflation Reduction Act, and the CHIPS Act are three historic investment opportunities that we in Minnesota can leverage to ensure that Minnesota is not left behind in this transition. Additionally, the Federal Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act and the Inflation Reduction Act offer funding opportunities that Minnesota's current and planned Oh, excuse me, to ensure that Minnesota's current and planned infrastructure is resilient in the face of extreme weather and the increase in precipitation levels, drought occurrences, and extreme heat events that are expected to be seen and felt over the coming decades. The billions of dollars of funding opportunities made available through these federal programs are significant and crucial to enabling long overdue upgrades and resiliency improvements to Minnesota's infrastructure. However, these funds are being made available on a wide range of timelines and being administered through several different federal agencies and all have varying eligibility criteria. Many of these funds are available, um, but must be won through competitive grant applications. So this will all require staff time and expertise. And we have heard time and time again from municipalities, school districts, community organizations, and fleet managers that while they're aware that there is funding out there, they simply don't have the capacity to identify potential funding sources put together an application, and then if one, administer and report on these funds. In order to ensure that Minnesotans cannot just take advantage of these opportunities, but maximize these opportunities at hand, technical assistance is critical to help build that capacity. The three bills put forward today by Chair Cagle would help us do just that, while leveraging the resources that are already available in the state, such as the expertise and knowledge of higher education institutions. Establishing an interagency advisory task force, as well as hiring a coordinator to work with all of the relevant state agencies, um, will help ensure that Minnesota is strategic in maximizing the opportunity at hand. This coordination will help Minnesotans through the state receive the benefits of this funding and will strengthen our infrastructure and make it more resilient for years to come. The task force and coordinator will not only ensure that Minnesota is not left behind, but will enable Minnesota to remain a leader through the rapid deployment of new technologies made possible through this funding. Fresh Energy supports the passage of these three bills and associated fundings. We would like to thank Chair Kegel for her leadership in this area, for recognizing the gaps that need to be filled in order for Minnesotans to receive the most benefits possible from these opportunities, for listening to the concerns and needs of stakeholders, and for your intentional and thoughtful solutions put forward today. We appreciate the opportunity to speak in support of these bills, and we urge your support. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your testimony. Are there any questions of the testifier? Welcome, Representative Franson. Um, okay, thank you again. Thank you. Uh, and um, that ends the testimony that we have on the list, but are, is there anyone else in the audience that would like to testify on House File 2406 as amended? Okay. Um, Chair Cagle, do you have any uh, comments or is there any additional discussion Representative Schultz. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Representative Cagle. Um, in a hyper-polarized environment today um, across the state, the nation, um, what guardrails do we have through this um, new program and federal, the federal funds coordinator and subsequent positions surrounding that to support? What guardrails do we have to ensure 
that a, a project uh, in a small town in rural Minnesota has the same um, ability to compete with one in the Twin, Twin Cities metro area um, when these, uh, uh, when this is a brand new position created that will be competing for federal funds. Chair Kegel. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Representative Schultz. I don't see the um, new position competing for federal funds with the local communities. I see them working hand in hand with those local communities. So um, really giving them the guidance that they're gonna need. Um, I don't, you know, I know that some of the communities in my area, and you know, I live in Anoka County, so we, we have, you know, quite a, a large uh, uh, staff at our county and um, a great engineer and very engaged. And so we've had the capacity to do some of these grants. Um, and unsuccessfully, um, which is, and so really what I see this as position as is, is the, um, like the best practices person. Um, so really gonna do that, that um, work on showing them what kind of um, funding is available to that community, um, what might make them the best competitive, um, you know, sort, or what would make their grant application most competitive. And then um, with the subsequent U of M's um, bill, that would really give us some um, resources to really go into those communities and do the, the groundwork to help them get that really competitive um, grant application. Uh, final follow up, Representative Schultz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Now, I, I, I think that this is, this is a way that the bill can improve, providing some sort of guardrails around this um, for the time spent. Um, obviously, it can, you know, it can be easy to, to, to pursue the, the, the largest amount of money, and we see it all the time around the state capitol where you know, we, could, we could use bonding as an example, where um, what the, the larger, like, let's take one mm -hmm. for example, like PSIG or drinking water funds, where you know, the, the bigger dollar numbers they rise to the top, which means that small towns, small communities have a harder time competing. And so um, that's my concern in a way where we can potentially work together to find a way to put some guardrails so that um, the, when, when a small community wants to compete for the same resources, knowing that they are finite, um, that they set on an equal playing field um, to, to larger communities. Thank you. Very insightful, Representative Schultz. I hadn't figured that out till my like fourth term. So <laughs> about bonding. So uh, that was really helpful. Uh, Representative Franson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and Representative Kegel. In the past, sometimes uh, bills are drafted with a um, with somebody already in mind for the job position. In crafting this legislation, does the um, is there already a person in mind that, that you plan on or that the government plans on hiring? And then also, um, what would be the qualifications required to be hired to be the coordinator and the staff? Chair Cagle. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Um, no, I don't have no. anybody in mind for the job. Um, I think you know the folks that have been doing it at the administration have other duties, um, and so it would you know be a they'd have to give up their their job to move into this position. But no, I don't have anybody in mind. Um, and I think the um, before you came, that was the same question that Representative Schultz asked about the qualifications. Um, and so we had, uh, or Representative Gilbert, I'm sorry. <laughs> they look like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, there were not I, don't, yeah, I don't know where to go with oh, that one. <laughs> that didn't come from this side. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, proceed with your Yeah. Response. So really just somebody who is a, a really good communicator, a good manager, um, can build those those outside um, relationships with entities that uh, will be working to get these kinds of funds, and so um, you know, I guess if it was on um, Indeed or whatever, it'd probably just be a project manager position. Representative Franson. So there's going to be a lot of federal money coming in. Everybody that comes t to us is saying, "Oh, there's going to be a lot of money coming to us. We need. We're going to hear another bill for some more. Another funding of a position for federal grant allocations. Are you certain that one person and then um, a few support staff is going to be able to handle the influx of?" federal dollars coming in and the large number 
of grant applications. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so Representative Friends in the state's not gonna be applying for the grants. Um, it's actually a lot of these discretionary funding grants um, exclude state government from applying from them because they want them to go to communities, nonprofits, um, lo uh, local governments. Um, and so really what I just see this as a kind of a tracking, a, um, a, a, a way to, to really engage and let folks know what's available out there. Representative Franson. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Representative Cagle. When you said nonprofit, that uh, reminded me of some of the other issues we've had in nonprofits recently. Um, feeding our future comes to mind. Uh, will this position also be taking a good look at how those tax dollars are being spent so that they're not going to nonprofits or organizations that are really just front groups to steal tax dollars from uh, the hardworking citizens of uh, not only the state of Minnesota, but we are dealing with federal dollars. Well, you know, so, I mean, it is the same wallet that these dollars are coming out, just two different buckets. Chair Cagle. Mr. Chair, um, Representative Franz, and these are to build projects. So, um, you know, I think that when a project doesn't get done, that would raise some big concerns. Um, and there are gonna be a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of, it's federal money, and so there's tons of oversight on it. I know um, that might not give you much confidence, but um, I think it's also our job to make sure that this is being spent wisely. And one of the things that um, I always look for is kind of a return on investment. So kind of going back to what Representative Schultz was talking about, um, you know, putting up some of the guardrails, I, I would really like to see some sort of reporting come out of that. And like, I don't know why, but I just, I get stuck on this um, return on investment. So I really wanna see how, um, how the dollars we're investing in in the state program, um, how it's leveraging state resource or leveraging that federal funding, and so um, I, I'm it, I would think in the next step I'd like to maybe um, figure out the reporting piece. Uh, Lee oh. Franson. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Representative Cagle. Uh, yes, you know, with the feeding fe feeding our future, uh, the intent was to feed a bunch of children, and those children were never there. So this is not new in nonprofits or organizations that come to the government and ask for, for dollars, that those dollars end up elsewhere. For example, child care assistance, right? Um, one would think you'd be able to track the number of kids that are coming in, um, but those uh, attendance sheets are fudged and so I'm just I'm just a little concerned about the fraud that could be taking place, and would hope that this individual, whoever is hired, would also oversee to make sure that people are acting appropriately. And then, um, uh, Mr. Chair, if you would indulge me in a, a roll call when the vote is taken, we will definitely have a roll call, Lee Franson. So what what I will do here is I'll, I'll ask for any if there's anyone who hasn't spoken yet, and then we'll end with the Representative Schultz. Uh, is there anyone? Yes, uh, Representative Reem. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. So um, in response to the comment about how uh, smaller cities might not be able to access these funds, I thought it was good to see the letter from the League of Minnesota Cities, and I know they talk about how Minnesota is a small city state. Um, so, and they're in support of this, um, these bills here. So I, I find that heartening, and I'm hoping that they will be working with this uh, the people in the new position to make sure that not only our large cities but also the small cities are benefiting from these funds. Thank you. Just a comment. Thank you. So we'll have one uh, final question or comment from uh, Representative Schultz. We'll go to the author and then we'll have a roll call vote. Representative Schultz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm very interested in guardrails around uh, this this bill, and uh, it's my understanding, Mr. Chair, that you have done good work on things like corridors of commerce. And so at this time, I'd like to move an oral amendment by, uh, following line 1.20 to say that 50% of staff support and activity must be spent on projects outside the seven county metro area. Again, we're, we're working off the DE amendment. Correct. And so this is, uh, if we could maybe have uh, Mr. Burris repeat for the uh, committee the oral amendment. 
I'm just said, uh, my understanding is this is 1.20 on the DE1. Uh, you're adding some short language. And, um, and I'll roll call, what, uh, ask for a roll call. On the amendment, yeah. So we'll have a roll call on the oral amendment and we'll have a roll call on the overall bill. Um, Mr. Chair? <coughs> Chair Kale, oh. do you want to respond before? I'll Let's wait do until this. Mr. I, Burris. I, I, I'd actually like Mr. Burris to sure. uh, just have on the record officially what we're dealing with here. So. And I'm happy to repeat this or share what I wrote down too. Okay. We'll um, just take a, a minute here to just, uh, make sure we have everything on the table here. I feel like there should be Jeopardy music playing. <laughs> and just a reminder. Uh, members, we will uh, uh, act on the oral amendment we'll, uh, by a roll call. We'll act on the bill by a roll call. And then we have two more bills. And uh, hopefully we can get those done today. But we do have the option to come back. Mr. Burris is writing furiously. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is it's not too long. And I do so appreciate much you pressure. indulging us. Of course. Absolutely. Okay, this is the uh, Schultz oral amendment that we will be considering now, and we just want to make sure that the uh, language is correct, and Mr. Burris will uh, uh, okay. recite that language. Uh, Mr. Chair and members, for the oral amendment, I have uh, page one after line 20, insert paragraph C, of the appropriation in each year 50% of the staff support and activity must be spent on projects outside the seven county metropolitan area. Thank you very much. Um, Representative Cagle, do you want to respond to that? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I guess I'm not, unlike, um, this isn't like quarters of commerce because this isn't going to actually be granting any money out. Um, and so I guess I'm just not real sure what it would do. It does have an, another step in state government. And so I think that that would probably be one of the best places to address this. Um, and so at the time I, um, you know, this, this is just a way to do outreach to communities and make sure that they're aware of, of the grants that are going to be um, done. And so at this time I would uh, recommend a no vote and with the, um, with the promise that we can um, work together on something for um, state government. The author of amendment gets the last word quickly, Representative Schultz. Thank you. No, the, this is just an important step that we can all take right now. Certainly this bill can change in state government, but this is a commitment from this committee that rural communities will not be left behind and that they will have equal access uh, to the seven county metro area to ensure that they have uh, the equal opportunity to seek federal dollars that are coming to the state of Minnesota. And I ask for your support. Thank you very much. We are now voting. Uh, on the Schultz oral amendment uh, uh, to the DE amendment, to the DE1. Uh, that is the phrase that uh, Mr. Burris uh, recited on line 1.20. A roll call has been requested. Uh, the clerk will take the roll. 
Sure, can I go? No. <coughs> Representative Acom? No. Representative Anderson? Anderson, I. Representative Clardy? No. Representative Gilman? Gilman, I. No. Representative Igo? Igo, I. Representative Kraft? No. Representative Ream? No. Representative Schultz? Schultz, aye. <clears throat> Representative Smith? No. Uh, there being uh, seven nays, five ayes, the motion does not prevail. Uh, I'm sorry. It's what did you say? Oh, yes. That there, there being five eyes and seven nays, the motion does not prevail. <laughs> he almost got again, Mr. Chair. Again, that that would yeah, that, that was all about yeah, your right, idea. Right. <laughs> just just making sure that uh, everyone is on their toes. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, members, uh, with that correction, uh, we will allow the chair. Um, the uh, final word. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Um, you know, I, I just, I'm really excited for this package of bills and um, I look forward to the next step and all the work that you guys have done through this committee. I think it's been a really um, engaging and thoughtful process. And so I just uh, appreciate everything that you guys done. Please support the bill. And just before we uh, take another roll call on, on the uh, bill as amended, I wanted to thank the committee for good <coughs> robust discussion here and we'll, um, Move on then to our next uh, bills. So with that, uh, the clerk will take the roll on House File 2406 as amended. Chair Cagle? Aye. Republican Lee Franson? No. Representative Acom? Aye. Representative Anderson? Anderson, no. Representative Clardy? Aye. Representative Gilman? Gilman, no. Chair Hornstein? Aye. Representative Igo? Igo, no. Representative Kraft? Aye. Representative Ream? Aye. Representative Schultz? No. Representative Smith? Aye. There being seven ayes and five nays, the motion prevails. Okay, we're on to our next bill, and uh, <coughs> that is uh, House File 20. Oh, so by the way, the, uh, I may have, I, I did not mention that we are, that bill is being referred to uh, local government, the previous bill. Um, so, or state government. Uh, House File 2499 uh, is our next bill on the agenda. Uh, Chair Cagle, would you like to move your bill? Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. 2499, I would like to re refer House File 2499 to your committee, Mr. Chair, the Transportation Finance and Policy Committee. Okay, uh, House File 2499 is moved, and I see you have an A1 author's amendment. Yes, Mr. Chair, I'd move the A1 author's amendment. Um, it deletes extension services and puts in the Regional Sustainable Development Partnership, which um, is suggested language from the U. All right, uh, discussion to the A1. Seeing none, all those in, oh, Representative Anderson has some discussion. Sorry about that, I didn't see you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the bill author, please ex explain a little bit about the Regional Sustainable Development Partnership. Well, we know about extension in Greater Minnesota. What about this other uh, entity you're, you're amending it to change to? And Mr. Chair, I will phone a friend here on that one. <laughs> Okay, uh, welcome to the committee. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and hello, everybody. I'm Kyle Shelton, the director of the Center for Transportation Studies at the U, and uh, we're with you a couple uh, weeks ago to talk about the bill. 
Um, RSDP, the Regional Sustainable Development Partnerships, is actually a part of extension. The reason for the amendment is that um, we've uh, got a track record through the Minnesota Design Center working with RSDP on the types of projects that this proposal is aimed at. Um, and RSDP would be an important partner on that. The, the reason for the amendment as well is that extension is not leading this effort, so we wanted to clarify that. Um, it would be working through the university partners uh, with CTS likely to be the administrative lead. Um, so we just wanted to be uh, as concise or as precise as possible with the, the lead partners from Extension. So Extension is still a valuable partner and RSDP having deep roots in communities and connections across the state um, is one of the reasons why we wanted to explicitly name them in the in the bill. Okay, thank you. And thank you for the question, Representative Anderson. Okay, so to the A1, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, the motion prevails. And so now we have um, uh, House File 2406 as amended before, uh, I'm sorry, 2499 <laughs> as amended before us. Uh, proceed with your uh, testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Um, this was the proposal that um, the Center for Transportation Studies um, gave us a couple of weeks ago. I don't know, this session's moving quick. Um, and so um, he, this was the detailed presentation that, that um, Mr. Shelton gave that day. And so this is just um, the language around that proposal. And so, um, yeah, any question, questions? Okay, uh, questions of the uh, committee? We have, okay, discussion. Representative Schultz. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Representative Cagle. Um, just a question for you. When we're sending um, quite a large sum of money to the University of Minnesota system, uh, how is that going to better help small communities apply for grants? Mr. Chair, I will also Chair phone Chair. that over to my friend here. <laughs> thank you, Chair Hernstein, and Dr. thank you, Schultz. Representative Schultz. You're already uh, here. Uh, proceed with your testimony <laughs> okay, and thank you. answer the question. Thank you. Um, so the university in this case is really excited about this program because part of the goal is so that the funding can allow for us to support those communities and, and engage with those communities from the very beginning. The funding for this program would enable us to, to reach out to those communities, work with the other bodies the legislature and state agencies are creating to show opportunities to the smaller communities as we've been talking about to say, there are these discretionary funds. If you'd be interested in having the support, these programs exist. This funding is explicitly to allow us to go to those communities, engage with them in a deep way, understand what their needs and challenges are, and to support them in that. So the program would be set up in a way where what the funding is allowing is the time uh, and uh, expertise of the university folks joining the time and expertise of those communities to answer their challenges. Representative Schultz, a follow up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the, uh, I, there is a lot of concern in, in rural communities about urban planners coming to rural communities and telling us how to live. And, and I, I'm concerned by the way that this, this bill reads through that, through that end um, because that's that, ultimately that's kind of the way that this, this reads. And so um, my question is just, um, is, is, is there any, whether it's from the federal government or what is seeking to be done here at the state, are there any strings attached to uh, basically the narrative that is pushed within rural communities from these entities within the University of Minnesota. Dr. Shelton. Sure. Uh, so I think our goal with the entire program, uh, most mostly oriented around the work that the Minnesota Design Center and RSDP would do, but with the entire effort laid out before you, is to orient this first and foremost towards the needs and challenges as the communities define them and to work with them to really understand what the parameters of that looks like, what types of projects they're looking for, and how the university can support them in finding projects that meet those ends. So the I, I totally take your point and understand that uh, uh, tension that small communities have had with all sorts of a range of practitioners, it's not just small communities either. Um, our goal is to sort of flip that and to be able to say, how do we come to you as a partner, and how do we come to you understanding your needs and supporting them? And Mr. Chair? Uh, Chair Cagle. Uh, um, and thank you, Mr. Chair and, and um, Representative Schultz. I think about the Pell study that my community went through um, when looking at Highway 65, um, really engaging our entire community, um, not just folks who live along the Highway 65 corridor, but also um, commute 
and use transit and um, work in the area and really um, engaging them on what they wanted our area to look like and what they wanted that road to look like. And so now um, I'm sure you've heard it from from Representative West and um, about Highway 65, but we have, you know, we have community engagement because the 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 alternatives were laid out and the community chose them. Um, and we were able to really put our vision of what we wanted it to look like um, into planning. And so I, I, it was a really cool process and that's why I'm kind of so gung-ho about this because it has to be community-led. Um, nobody knows your community like the people who live in it. And so hearing what their, their um, concerns are and then having the, um, you help them address those concerns is really the, the crux of this legislation. Representative Schultz. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, Representative Cagle. Uh, I, I, I hope that that remains the premise, that, that we want to engage our communities. And then let's just take, for example, um, you know, community in my district, XYD, XYZ needs, needs to build a road. And the purpose is just let's, let's, let's build the road. Let's not social engineer any sort of agenda into the community through urban planning and other things. And, uh, and so let's, I hope that that is the end of uh, the, the work that is done through the university. Thank you. Representative Franson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Representative Cagle, to me, this, this bill, 2499, uh, to, in my opinion, um, reads as a, a bill that's just going to fund student research development using general tax dollars, uh, giving them like a jobs program for grad students, if you will, uh, using the excuse of uh, the federal funds coming in. Small cities already have expertise. This is not something new. They, they have written grants before. Why is it that you believe they need to have their hands held for this particular program and, and then to offshore it to the organizations listed in, in your bill. Mr. Chair, Representative Franson, that hasn't been what I've been hearing from the communities that I've been working with. I've been doing it through this entire um, 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 committee process and since you know the interim, I've been really engaging on um, how IIJA and these um, federal funds are going to uh, affect our state. And, and the thing that I have heard from communities and um, was that they don't know how to engage in it. They don't know how to access it. They don't know what kind of projects they qualify for. And so um, I see this as an as a opportunity to, um, you know, help our communities um, use <laughs> expertise within our own state and really develop projects that are going to um, address the needs of all communities across the state. I'll up Representative Franson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. But don't you think that the cities already know what they need? I mean, they have city, city planners, city engineers. Why do we need the U reaching out to the cities and saying, this is what you need, and then spending $5 million to do that. There was an individual in my office yesterday summed up what her opinion is what this bill is. It's to try to change how things are done. So $5 million to, tr and this was a proponent of, of the piece of legislation here, $5 million to try to change how things are done. And I found that very interesting that we're gonna spend $5 million to try to change how things are done. So we'll have Mr. Lightfoot, and then following Mr. Lightfoot, the, I know we have a question, follow up from Representative Anderson, so we'll call on him after Mr. Lightfoot responds to uh, Representative Franson's question. Yeah, Mr. Please Chair. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members, good morning. My name is Daniel Lightfoot with the League of Minnesota Cities. And Mr. Chair, Representative Franson, uh, thank you for the comment. I think the the challenge uh, in in many of our small cities is that they they don't have the capacity um, to uh, do a lot of the pre-application uh, requirements uh, required by a lot of these federal grant applications. 
many of those small cities uh, don't have planning directors or grant uh, employees to help um, uh, put together applications. Um, and so oftentimes in a city with less than a thousand, less than 5,000 people in population, um, you probably only have a, a city clerk and maybe one or two other employees. So um, the, the, the crux of the bill is and the, the several bills that is before the committee today is providing resources to um, for those small cities to have an equitable shot at some of these large discretionary grant programs. And I would say many of the programs through the IIJ and the IRA have a sustainability component built into uh, the metrics of how uh, applications are scored. Um, small cities are, are um, definitely not uh, a stranger to uh, the resources at the University of Minnesota. Um, and so uh, we believe that this bill and the others before the committee today will actually uh, assist many of those small cities to have a, a, a much a better foot forward in, uh, in developing these grant applications. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lightfoot. Um, okay, we have, did you have any? Okay. Um, we, I, I forgot, I'm sorry, Representative Anderson, we had Representative Reem on the list, and we'll go to Representative Anderson and then Representative Igo. Rep Representative Reem. Thank you, Chair. Um, so a quick question. So are we, um, when we're looking at this um, work, are we talking about water infrastructure as well? Because I know I've received emails, um, in particular I received an email from the mayor of Swanville asking for help with their water infrastructure, and I'm curious if this is something that would pertain to helping smaller cities with their water treatment centers and their water infrastructure. Chair Cagle. Mr. Chair and members, um, yeah, yeah. I think any kind of the infrastructure projects that would fall under the IAJA or IRA or, you know, other any kind of um, infrastructure projects, um, you know, if a community comes with a road problem, they might not even be thinking about stormwater drainage. And so, um, you know, I think it's really about helping the community identify um, problems that they might not have thought about um, and how to really layer those co-benefits on top of each other. And so um, this is really about all of our infrastructure. Thank you, Ma Madam Chair. Um, yeah, I just think we really need to work on our water infrastructure. And so if this can help small cities as well as big cities, you know, improve that, I think this will be great. So I'm hoping it'll benefit everyone here in our state. Thank you. All right, uh, Representative uh, Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. To the bill author, um, being we're going through MnDOT, is the, the primary focus of this um, roads and highways and transportation? Chair Cagle. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Representative Anderson, I, I think it's about all infrastructure. Um, and so I th because it, it was led by the Center for Transportation Studies, I believe that's the bill path, but um, I, it's not, I don't think it's going to be transportation focused. The thing is the IIJA is transportation focused. So I think that's really going to guide a lot of the projects as well. Representative Anderson. Thanks again, Mr. Chair. So the, for this grant, uh, yeah, it's a lot of money, $5 million over two years. Will, the, will MnDOT be getting a portion of that for admin costs? Chair Cagle. Um, Mr. Chair, I, no. Okay, uh, anything, uh, so, any additional questions here? One last follow-up? Yeah, so this is going to uh, MnDOT, the bill summary says, so they're gonna be handling $5 million with an agreement to the university and they're not gonna be getting anything for, for their work admin with this? Chair Cagle. <coughs> Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, we, I haven't, we didn't write anything into the bill for administrative costs. I think um, MnDOT is just the vehicle for the, the, um, the, the fiscal part um, for the appropriation. Um, because we're a policy committee, um, I'm not getting, I'm, I might not be getting a budget target. Um, and so uh, this is really trying to figure out, you know, how are we going to maximize that? And with the IIJA being so much around transportation funding, um, it would, it, it would, you know, they, they would be kind of like the, what is it, the fiscal administrator, yeah, fiscal agent. There we go. Going back to my nonprofit days there. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, one, one final question or comment, Representative Anderson. Yeah, I find that uh, unusual. Um, so could this money have gone directly to the university uh, in bypassed MnDOT? Mr. Chair, um, it probably could. I, yeah, I'm not sure. I think it's just more. Um, a, yeah, I, and that's something we can work on if it if it if we want to just give it straight to the U. That's fine. Um, but I think it's you know for me it was about trying to find a home for it. Um, we'll double check that, uh, Representative Anderson. But we've in the past um, uh, engaged with uh, the U on several different similar types of studies and projects, and we can find out the custom and usage on that. Um, Representative Kraft, um, <coughs> we'll take your comments and then uh, wrap things up. Oh, Representative Igo was on the Oh, list. I'm sorry, Representative Igo. <laughs> <coughs> it was crossed out, so I, I thought maybe you Thank you, Mr. Chair. said no. Um, so reviewing the bill language, I think my only question, and maybe this thing you could add, because I think it would be a friendly kind of addition, would be some sort of reporting mechanism to see you know, what we're actually gonna accomplish by this, you know, if we're gonna be reaching out to small cities. And I think it'd just be good to get a report back. You know, the OLA's made lots of recommendations over the past couple of years that we should be doing some audits to see you know, just the impact and how far our dollars are getting stretched. So if we're gonna put five million in um, and we're gonna partner with these small communities, uh, I think having an addition in there so we can find out what small communities were helped and what kind of projects were helped would be a good addition. So uh, maybe just a recommendation. I mean, if it's friendly, we could maybe do an oral amendment right now if you're into that, or at least we can talk offline. Let's talk up. Well, go ahead. And Mr. I Chair, um, Representative Igo, this is going, you know, there's more committee stops. And so I want to make sure that we're getting the language right. Mm -hmm. So um, let's work offline. I'm pretty sure that you would love to give report about their work. <laughs> um, and so uh, let's let's get the language right. I, I, I um, look forward to reading that report. Man, I never thought I would say something like that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Representative Vigo, it's coming to transportation, finance, and policy, and we'll make sure there's an amendment uh, to that effect if needed. So. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> so now to Representative Kraft, and uh, then we'll wrap things up on this bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Chair Cagle. Thanks for bringing this bill. Um, uh, a comment, and maybe then a question. I encourage to see. Um, I think this. Make sure I have the DE amendment. Well, that there's a preference for uh, political subdivisions and governments based on insufficiency of capacity to undertake the development, uh, project development. So there's a bias built into this to folks that don't have the capacity to do that. And then <clears throat> one question I would ask is, as I was previously in city government and did work with cities uh, across the state, one of the things that I heard was that often uh, cities don't even know about the opportunities. And so I'm, I'm, my question is, is this both a, a reactive in terms of requesting, but also a proactive to be able to reach out to smaller communities that may not be aware of opportunities there are to bring them into the process? Chair Cagle. Mr. Chair, Representative Kraft, yes. And I see that working um, in partnership with the um, infrastructure coordinator. Um, and so um, really just getting, you know, kind of raising awareness, getting some PSAs out to our communities about what's available, I guess, um, and then really kind of helping them develop the projects. I think um, one of the things you see a lot up here is, is planning and development studies um, and or pre-design engineering and all that kind of stuff. And, and I really see this as, as a um, place where that work can, ta can take place um, before the grant application process even goes forward. Thank you. Is there any... Okay, a roll call has been requested and granted. Um, any further discussion on House File 2499 as amended? Final comments, Chair Cagle. Thank you, uh, members. Again, I just want to thank all of the organizations and stakeholders that engaged on this. Um, it's been a really fun process um, trying to um, learn as much as I possibly can, but then um, getting to build these new relationships with folks that really care about um, nerdy things like infrastructure. So with that, I will renew my motion um, to re-refer House File 2499 as amended to the Transportation Policy Committee. The roll call has been requested. The clerk will take the roll. Chair Cagle? Aye. Vice Chair Curran? Aye. Lee Francis? No. Representative Acom? Aye. 
Representative Anderson. Anderson, no. Representative Clardy. Aye. Representative Gilman. Gilman, no. Chair Hornstein. Aye. Representative Igo. No. Representative Kraft. Aye. Representative Ream. Aye. Representative Schultz. No. Representative Smith. Aye. There being eight ayes and five nays, the motion prevails. Uh, you're on your way to transportation, finance, and policy. Okay, uh, members, we have one final bill on the agenda today, and that is House File 2405, Infrastructure Resiliency Advisory Task Force Established. Uh, and Chair Cagle, do you have an, a motion for House File 2405? I believe you're going to state and local government. Correct. I would um, move that House File 2405 be referred to state and local government finance and policy. House File 2405 is moved. Um, Chair Cagle, tell us about your bill. This is the one that um, is the, the task force um, that is going to kind of help us um, determine how to set up some of the, the Michigan Infrastructure Council uh, style um, agency or organization in our state and so um, this is really just kind of allowing us to dig in a bit further and um, figure out governance and scope and all that kind of good stuff around um, how we can set up something very similar to in, uh, Michigan so that we can start seeing all these co-benefits and saving um, costs on projects. Thank you very much and I believe you have a uh, testifier. Actually, um, Ms. Ziegler can't be here this morning. Okay. Right. Um, committee discussion to the bill. Questions of the author. Okay. Representative Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And this is just a technical question, um, Representative Cagle. On page two, line uh, 14, it mentions uh, a member appointed by each utility that owns a nuclear powered plant. Uh, we only have one here, so um, it, it implies that, that there's more than one, I guess, with your language. Is that your intent? Sure, Cagle. Um, and uh, could you maybe identify in the bill uh, what, uh, what, which uh, line you're looking at? Two point one. Line 14. On page two. Okay, so this relates uh, members and, and those in the um, public. Uh, 2.14. Uh, is the line here in discussion. Representative uh, Chair Cagle. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and so um, they've changed their name in the past. So this is just making sure that, um, you know, we're identifying that that and, and this is kind of boilerplate task force language, so. But if we need to name them, um, yeah, so it's just making sure that we have that kind of um, entity in, whether it's Excel or oh. whatever. I think Mr. Johnson uh, has a clarifying comment oh, here. Okay, I think I know what the, the intention of the uh, author is, but uh, Good clarification here from Mr. Johnson. Please state your name for the record and uh, proceed with your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, representative. Um, that phrase is the normal way that, that that utility is referred to because we cannot call out a specific business in statute. And so it's a general term and you would not say, you know, the uh, utility that owns one typically because that's the same as calling them out individually. So you would say any that owns one to make it a general term that still in this case currently only applies to one. Thank you. Thanks for the clarification, Mr. Johnson. Okay, any other questions uh, to the author, uh, Representative Igo? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and Madam Chair, going through the bill, I think, and you know I've had some conversation on this before, I think one membership missing maybe from this, and I know it always it's tough when you're trying to create membership for a task force like this and who do you include and who do you not. But if we're gonna talk about sustainable infrastructure, I think it might be worth having conversation about maybe having manufacturing represented or industry. 
just because, you know, if we can be tying our sustainable infrastructure to development in Minnesota for the manufacturing needed, I think that would be good. Um, so maybe just something to think about as this bill moves forward to the process that we can maybe add a group like that. Good suggestion. Uh, Chair Cagle. Uh, Mr. Chair, Representative Igo, I think that's a good point. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm totally open to, um, you know, figuring out who would best be suited for this task force. I think, you know, it's, it's um, we want a bunch of input, but then when you get the room too big, it's a little hard as well. And so, but I do think that is a key um, uh, player at the table. And so I would be um, open to doing that. Again, let's get the language right. We have more stops. So you and I should maybe set up a time to sit down and go over some of these ones. Absolutely. The substitute teacher gives Representative Igo two gold stars today. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, Chair Francis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Representative Cagle, I don't see any dollar amounts listed in this bill as I read through. Is, uh, is it the intent to not pay per diems for time? Is there going to be a budget for the task force later down the road? Chair Cagle. Um, Mr. Chair, from my understanding, because so many of the members are commissioners or um, staff of the state, that um, they would already be compensated for their work on this. Um, I think probably, yeah, I don't see any costs associated with this, and I don't know if um, that's something that would need to be address but there has been a fiscal note requested on this and so um, being that we're moving to a finance committee next um, we should see that fiscal note there Thank you. Oh, yeah. I see one of the lines that it's there's no, no yeah no mm -hmm. compensation but still sometimes there is for reporting purposes there is some sort of a cost associated so sure thank you thank you thank you for the question representative Francis. Uh, okay I don't see any further discussion or questions of the author. So, uh, Chair Cagle, do you want to wrap up? Uh, Thank you so bill? much, everybody, for all your hard work on this committee. I'm really excited about some of the things that we're going to be able to um, dive into with this and um, really benefit our state when it comes to our physical infrastructure. And because you guys were so good with for the substitute teacher, we don't have Friday hearings. So, <laughs> yay. I really appreciate it. And um, with that, I will move House File 2405 to State Gov. State Government Finance and Policy. Okay, the uh, bill is moved. Uh, the motion is renewed. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the motion prevails. <laughs> Uh, and members, I'd like to, uh, since I have the prerogative of the, the gavel here, to thank you, uh, Chair Cagle, for your work, uh, since this is our last meeting. Uh, and um, I think that particularly the work on IIJA and assisting local governments is very, very important. I know that was one of your uh, goals, and I think we accomplished that. Lee Franson, thank you uh, for uh, your participation, involvement, and, and and questions and conversation all members I think did a great job so um, look forward to uh, anything we do in the interim and, and next year uh, and with that we are adjourned thank you all